Hey guys, and hey, welcome back. I did a yard sale video last week, and uh, it was the Honda 125 motorcycle, a couple of generators and whatnot. And of course I went yard sailing again because it's the season, and uh, that video seemed fairly popular. So if people like them, I'll make more. And uh, this will be this week's haul. We got some stuff. The ramps are mine. I just had to throw them on top because I ran out of room, as you can tell. And I've got some goodies. The winch is mine also. That one. But, a decent haul nonetheless. So there's a lot of background noise going on out here. What I'll do is I'll load the truck and uh, maybe put them in the garage and we could do a little bit uh, better show and tell. So without further ado, I'm going to get that done. Let's see if we can do the metal real quick. Truck's unloaded. So I grabbed all this and it's got a good mix of different metals. That looks like quarter inch, 3 16 possibly underneath it. Yeah, that looks like a 3 16 Some eighth. I'm not sure what that one is. A little thicker than that. Some angle. And this is uh, solid stock. This is looks like one inch by eh, six inch by about two feet long. There's four pieces of that. Uh, some square tubing, some angle. A piece of plate that uh, some stuff was carved out of. And uh, some brackets. And then some uh, trailer mount stuff. And all that was uh, 20 bucks. So I figured that was worth it because sometimes you'll pay about 20 bucks just for one stick of that. You ever go in Home Depot and see their, their prices of the stuff? It's ridiculous. So that would be the metal. And some of the stuff I also grabbed, uh, smaller pieces that was in the cab, was a uh, genuine imitation samurai sword. It's a you know, Chinese knockoff. That was a buck. And I figure I'd just use that to go cut it up and make something stupid out of. So I did like that. A couple of uh, S50 uh, Sirius satellite radio stuff. I use an S50 in my garage and in my trucks. Mine has been kind of acting up a little bit. And I, the thing is I have docking stations in, you know, in the house, in the garage, in the trucks. And I don't want to switch over to a different one. So I went to go look for a new one on uh, eBay and stuff. And they are fairly expensive. So I was lucky to find yard sailing. This is a like a double setup. One is a this one is the house one, house docking station. This is the actual unit right here. So that would plug into that. And then there is a car setup. That's the car setup one right there. So has the suction cup, the mounts, the antennas, a couple of remotes. Not sure what that is right there but it passed inspection. So we got those goodies. And again, like I said, like another set of antennas, power supply, uh, the taps are tapping into your stereo. And uh, all that was 20 bucks, so that's a fairly good deal. Cause I think the ones I saw on eBay at the time were around 80 bucks or so. And that was just for uh, like one of them. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was, but, and there wasn't many available. There's only two or three that were on there. So that'll be good and it allows me to have more docking stations because I have the other Toyota Tundra. It doesn't have one in it yet, so I can take that one and mount it in there. Moving on, we have the same place where the, melt, the metal came from was this guy. And this is stuff for TIG torches, or uh, TIG welding rather. And it's a bunch of TIG torch pieces, parts, and the like. Uh, this is not my torch. I believe I have a 7, Series 7. This is 9 and 20. But uh, I could probably change the torch head out, and a lot of this stuff does kind of cross over. But uh, there was a bunch of pieces of that. Some, some tungstens and a uh, gauge. And this is one of the better gauges. It's got the ball on the side of it. So this is a pressure, and this one tells you a flow when you're pulling the trigger, how much you're actually having with the other ones with just a gauge. It really doesn't tell you um, as accurately how much you are using. So and that one actually looks like a fairly decent one. I don't see made in China anywhere right yet. What's the name on it? Victor. So I'm gonna change that out for the one that I'm using now. Grab this guy. This is a, uh, I don't know what it was, but I know it's gonna be, it's probably gonna be a shifter for me. I think it looks kind of cool. That looks like a buck or two. I don't know if I said this was 30 bucks right here for this stuff. And uh, that alone is, is worth the 30 bucks. Actually, the, the uh, non-Chinese uh, 
tungstens are probably uh, pretty close to that too. So, and with that same setup came a winch that was in the free pile, just doesn't have controls. Haven't hooked power to it. He said it does work, but he kept breaking the end of the cable off for whatever he was using it on. I think it was on a four wheeler. So it's nothing special. It's just a uh, Harbor Freight winch. But again, for free, I do leave them in the back of my truck and I have a truck uh, in the truck that I use for winching stuff into them and they fail uh, over time. So if that works with putting power to it, that'll just be a replacement in the stash. All right, and then we move over to here. A couple of bike parts or frames or whatever you want to call them. This one is a roll fast, you know, 20 inch style bike. And what I liked about this one was the seat. I had a pretty cool looking seat. Sissy bar is broke, front wheel rim is a piece of crap. Uh, handlebars probably clean up in the neck and actually the frame doesn't look that bad. But uh, that was uh, 10 bucks, it's kind of iffy about buying that. Like I'm trying to slow down a little bit on the hoard of the stuff I'm getting. But uh, you know, that disease goes. And then this one is much better, uh, although it is missing a bunch of pieces. Um, but this is, I believe, a Raleigh chopper. Missing uh, a bunch of stuff, but um, I think if you fix the tires, it'd probably be a riding bike. And uh, that was, I want to say that was 30 bucks. And uh, again, the seat alone on that is worth the 30 bucks. Although it's, you know, kind of rough. Oh, there's the head badge on that guy. And I think it's got a three-speed rear rim in it, but it's missing the chain that comes out of the center. But I do believe that is a three-speed hub that's on there. And I think it's a three-speed hub with a uh, kickback brake. Not sure on that, but uh, I don't see anywhere where a caliper brake would have been mounted. It might have been right there, but just not sure. That's those two guys. And as we start to wind down, it can be these last two pieces, and they both came from the same yard sale too. And uh, there was uh, 50 bucks on the go-kart and 10 bucks on the welding. I believe it's a welding cart for tanks. And the welding cart, I really don't need the welding cart, but what I liked about it was the uh, antique wheels that are on it. So I'm probably gonna take them off and uh, use the rest of it for scrap metal. But the cart, I, I gave the 50 bucks for that. If I can get him to throw that in, that's what it was. So I got, for 50 bucks, I got both pieces. And the dingo is supposed to be up and running and rideable. I did not run it and ride it. I figured for 50 bucks, a frame was worth that. He said he just got done spending $65 on a new carburetor and it does look like it has one on there. Uh, this engine, I have uh, plenty of this kind of stuff out back. And uh, even if that's beat, you still use it for what it is. I'm trying to block you from the wind right now. The engine looks like it's sitting a little kitty wampus. I think the, the mounting plate is taking a twist or two. So we may have to take that off and uh, kind of beat it back into submission. But I just kind of plan on flipping this and uh, having that pay for all the stuff that I just got. So my stuff will be free. But it looks pretty cool. Do you know what I mean? If you look at the engine and you look at the uh, seat back, you can kind of see how it's leaning on that angle. So, and if not, the clutch alone is kind of worth that too for one of my bike projects. So. And uh, nothing says we can't try and uh, fire it up and see if we can hurt ourselves before we get rid of it, right? And last year's uh, yard sale find is uh, pretty much been completed. I've put about 40 or 50 miles on it since the uh, last video. And the last little pieces came in, which was the plug wires are on it and the one lens that was busted and they, they were cheap i think the plug-in wires were like four bucks a piece and the lens was six bucks so and that guy should be good to go and with that guys i want to thank you all again for commenting and watching and subscribing and uh, we'll get into these pretty soon what do you say we go figure out if the winch does anything switch that's good the only thing it doesn't have is a controller what are the chances it'll take air oh. 
it'll take air if it stay in, you know what I meant. You not push our luck? No more. That's 50% there. Does that fork look a little bent back? Little boys bikes. Let's see what the back one does. So the tire stayed up and ran it up and down the driveway and uh, it does have uh, kickback brakes on it, coaster brakes, there's the lever right there, but because the uh, shifter's not on it, it's stuck in third gear, so she's a, a bit to get going, let's just say, and the handlebar should be a little tight for a uh, guy that's 6'1". Alright, what do you say we find out if this thing runs? I have no idea what we need to do to get it to go. It would suck if it runs full throttle now, wouldn't it? I don't know if that's hooked up to anything. What do you guys want to jump out if this thing takes off and hit the kill switch for me? You impressed? What do you say we cheat and we put a little bit of fuel in it? How about try putting a little bit of a little bit of go juice down there? Gas in the tank smells a little on the funky side, so it may have an issue. Mm-hmm. 